Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some fun techniques with embossing folders and ink cubes. So I have all the supplies that I use in this video listed in the description box down below if you're interested. And uh, I'm just going to pull out some supplies. So I have a bunch of embossing folders and some baby wipes and some cardstock. I'm using heavyweight cardstock here and I just take the baby wipe and sort of wipe down the cardstock. As these are 3D embossing folders, they etch pretty deeply, so I want to make sure that my cardstock doesn't crack. So I'm going to line them up in the embossing folder, run them through, and then we have these beautiful textural results. So I have five or six different embossing folders here, and I'm just using my Gemini Junior die cutting machine, and I'll emboss all of these beautiful panels. So here we go, we've got all my panels embossed, and now I have these Alta New ink cubes, and I keep them in the little Tim Holtz ink cube holders. And I like that because I can see them visually what's inside, and they're nice and neat and organized. Another thing that I'm gonna share with you today is this little ink cube holder. Um, I carry these in my online store along with the ink pad holder, and this is a new design that I have. These ones are all black, and they have little black rubber feet on the bottom of them, and you can pop your ink pads into them, and they'll stay still on your work surface, and you won't have to worry about, you know, holding the ink pad while you ink up ink blending brushes and such, and it keeps everything neat and tidy and organized and easy to grab. And then for the ink cube holder, it also holds the lid and the ink cube, and then it's got a little finger notch on the side. Both of the ink pad holders have little finger notches where you can grab out the lids and the pads and not have to worry about getting ink on your fingers. Super cool. So again, I have these on my website listed in the description box down below, and we ship to Canada and US if you're interested in these. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just set these aside, and we're gonna start with some of these inks from Alta New. This is an aqua set with some beautiful colors, and I'm just gonna grab the ink cube and very lightly drag it across the embossed panel. So the raised edges are gonna grab that ink and create some really cool highlights. And I really like the way this looks. So I've got the lightest color here. This is Mountain Mist, and I'm just gonna swipe up and down, turn the cardstock, and then I'm gonna go to another darker color here. I've got Volcano Lake, and I'm just gonna swipe that, and then we'll move to Lagoon, which is a nice, rich, sort of deep green blue. It's really pretty. And then the final color is emerald, and it's a really deep, rich green. And I really love the results. It just makes these leaves pop right off the cardstock. I didn't like some of the stark white lines in the back, so I'm gonna grab my blending brush and the lightest color, the mountain mist, and I'm just gonna ink up some of that really white area just to soften it a little bit. And I'm not applying a whole lot of ink, just a little bit, and I like the way that looks. Much better. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and move on to a blue set of ink cubes. And I'm gonna use this wavy background, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna drag the ink cubes across the page. And I really like this result because it reminds me of sound waves. Once it's done, you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've got the lightest color, and that's Arctic. And then I've got Caribbean Sky. This is a beautiful blue. There's another blue, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember the name of this one. Parisian blue, I think. And then finally we have Sapphire. And I'm just swiping up and down, and this is where you can kind of see those sound waves start to come into focus here. And I really like this the way that this turned out. I like those drag marks from the edge of the ink pad. So I'm gonna go back and do that again. I'm gonna take the ink pad and I'm just gonna kind of tilt it to one side, just to like the left side. And then that's it for that panel. Now I'm gonna work on a green panel and I'm just gonna do a gradient color. I've got a set of greens. I'm just going to take the lightest green and swipe up and down across the top. 
and then I'm going to take the mid-tone green and swipe into the lighter one and then go down and then the darkest green I'm going to blend into the mid-tone green and then all the way to the bottom so I'm overlapping to create a little bit of a blend between the colors and then making dark to light and I really like this this is a really beautiful forest background Okay, so now I decided to mix it up. I decided to take some sort of orangey yellow, some pink and some purple, and it gets a little wild here. This panel, I felt like sometimes you just need to know when to stop, and I didn't stop here, and <laughs> it turned out kind of crazy, and it gets a little scary, and then in the end, this turns out to be my favorite card. So let's just walk through that. So I'm inking up with the pink and the orange, just rubbing that ink cube onto the page. And then I'm going to bring in some purple here. And then what happened was I got some little bit of harsh lines on the edge of my cardstock and I, I didn't really like it. And then it kind of blended into the orange and made a weird, like yucky color. And so I thought, all right, well, let's try a darker purple. And I tried to I tried to blend a little bit more with the ink cube on the edge of the paper and it, I mean it looked okay um, it was a little blotchy and kind of weird so I took my blending brush and I started trying to blend that purple into those white areas and uh, I still wasn't happy with it so I decided to bring in some black ink I thought maybe I could intensify the edges to create a more rich look and I swiped the ink around the edge of my paper and it just got kind of ridiculous I thought oh my goodness I need to just stop and throw this out but I couldn't let it go so I grabbed a blending brush and some more of that purple and really just tried to blend that black into the purple and I, I guess I was kind of rushing here I thought for sure I was gonna give up um, and then it kind of looked okay. I thought the well, one last thing I'm going to try to do is bring in some white pigment ink. So I just kind of smooshed down my white pigment ink onto my silicone mat and picked it up with a blending brush and then sort of brushed it over top of my cardstock. I really like the look of that black and purple and but it was a little bit too splotchy so I wanted to soften it up a little bit and then so I took that pigment ink and just swiped up and down all over the cardstock and then I just uh, I just set it aside after that I thought okay I'm just gonna leave this alone either it's gonna dry nice or I'm gonna toss it so I'm really covering that white pigment ink over top of that panel I'm gonna grab a cloth and just sort of buff off any excess and hopefully that'll <laughs> help blend everything together. Um, in this case, I'm glad I didn't give up because I do like the way that the final card looks. Once that ink softens and blends into the cardstock, it looks really pretty. So I'm just gonna set that aside and now we're gonna move on to another panel here and I'm gonna create like a rainbow blend. I wanted to grab a bunch of bright colors and create rainbows. And I like the way that some of those flowers just kind of catch on the edge of the ink cube. It looks really pretty. And I'm going to keep doing this with one color after another. I'm going to do some pink and some purple and some blue and some green and create a really pretty rainbow. And then I'm just going to leave this background stark white. I really like the way this looks in the end. It looks really pretty. Okay, now that all of my panels are finished, I've trimmed the edges and glued them all to A2 size card bases with a nice white border around them. And I have this set from Tailored Expressions. This is the Simple Strips. Simple Strips is a series of stamps that have a bunch of sentiments on them and they have coordinating dies to cut all those sentiments out at once and I really love these so I have multiple different sets of these tailored expression simple strips they're just my favorite so I already have some of these stamped and heat embossed on black cardstock with white embossing powder and I feel like that black touch will be really 
nice pop for a sentiment to add to these colorful cards. And to line up these sentiments on my cards, I'm using a T-square ruler. And this is a mini T-square ruler from Simon Says Stamp. And this has become my most used and loved tool in my craft room. I feel like it's the absolute perfect little ruler for card makers. So I'm going to attach all of these sentiments to the cards and then that's going to be it. All of these cards are complete. Here's a close up look at the finished cards. And this is the one that turned out really pretty at the end. It, it was touch and go for a bit. And here's the you make my heart happy with this beautiful little rainbow. And then my sound waves celebrating with you today. Pop, fizz, clink, cheers. And then you are so loved, so grateful for you. And then finally, your kindness means so much. Okay, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate your support as always. All the products that I used in today's video will be linked in the description box down below. If you enjoyed this content, hey, make sure to give me thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!